Okay, I don't want to worry you or anything, but your exam is in two days' time. In fact, it's in about a day and a half by the time I put this up. Now, it's not an exam on this topic, because this is from paper two, but that's on Friday, so you still haven't got very long. So we're just going to finish off the Russia stuff today. So, Stalin's purge policy. Nice, tearful topic for a... Sunday afternoon. Stalin had a lot of enemies and most of them were a result of the power struggle. In 1934, Kirov, who was the leader of the Communist Party in Leningrad, was murdered. Stalin used this as an excuse to remove many of his opponents from the Communist Party, the Red Army and the country as a whole. The historians have argued that Stalin arranged Kirov's murder in order to have this excuse. Stalin purged the Communist Party by arranging show trials in which many leading Bolsheviks confessed to being traitors. It wasn't just leaders. Around 500,000 members were arrested on charges of non-Soviet activities, and they were either executed or sent to labor camps. Around 25,000 officers, which was one-fifth of them, were removed from the Red Army. Later, university lecturers, teachers, miners, agricultural workers, engineers, factory owners, and ordinary people suffered. They were arrested seemingly at random, often at night, and were rarely told what they were actually being charged with. They were tortured psychologically and physically, and if this didn't work, their families were threatened until they would just confess to anything. It was said that every family in the USSR lost someone to the purge. By 1937, around 18 million people had been transported to labor camps, and 10 million had died. The country suffered from the loss of so many able-bodied individuals. When Hitler invaded in 1941, there were, one of the Red Army's problems was that there were no decent officers because they'd all been purged. It also destroyed any sense of independent people because people were aware that their survival depended on thinking exactly as Stalin did. They didn't dare be rebellious. The Soviet Constitution of 1936 pretended to give people free speech and free elections, but actually the only candidates in these elections were the Communist Party, and the only newspapers and magazines that were published had been already state-approved. People felt happier, but really, they hadn't gained anything. Stalin wanted them to think they had a good deal so that they would support him. The cult of Stalin. People really admired Stalin as a leader and as a person, despite their suffering. They saw him as one of them who would change everything. He, they didn't think that the purges were anything to do with him. There were statues and photos of Stalin everywhere, and people began to think of him as some sort of god. Poets and playwrights wrote things praising him, directly or indirectly. Composers wrote music praising him. Some of them did this because they were genuinely patriotic. Some of them just did it because they were skint, because musicians are always skint. There were regular processions in his honour, and religious worship was banned because he didn't want people thinking about, you know, God instead of him. Successes and failures of Stalin between 1924 and 1941. His successes were that the people worshipped him and wouldn't think ill of him. He dramatically increased production and industry with his five-year plan. He managed to make people think they had freedom even when they didn't. And the whole country was motivated, allowing modernization to happen very quickly. Because remember, Russia had been a very backward country before, and now it was taking its place as one of the major powers. His failures were that when Hitler invaded, he had few good officers to lead his army. Peasants were starving while he traded their food with other countries. There was bitterness among those su suffering and people were living in absolute terror, which wasn't great for morale. His methods of control were as follows. Making people afraid. During the purges, no one knew who would be taken or when, so everybody tried to stay inconspicuous. Propaganda. There were posters and statues everywhere, and people began to think of Stalin as a god. Education. Education was compulsory, but biased. In school textbooks, disgraced leaders had their paper pasted over their faces as though they'd never existed at all. Control of economy. They sold produce, and if people did not meet targets, they were fined. Control of mass media. No newspapers or magazines were published that hadn't been state approved. Cult of the personality. If you asked people about the purges, they would probably say that it had been nothing to do with Stalin at all. And that's all I've got for Russia. I'm assuming that is just where it ends and that, you know, I'm not missing something. Last year there was an eight-mark question on the purges and the show trials, which I thought was really harsh, because we did that as a mark. So you might want to, you know, go back and watch this again, but I doubt that will come up again. It might. Paper 1, which is on Tuesday, is all the League of Nations stuff, all of Hitler's foreign policy, and the origins of the Cold War, and the crises of the Cold War, which I haven't covered. However, I have covered those other two topics, and you only have to do three of those four. So you might want to go back and watch the other videos. I'm going to put them in a playlist called Paper 1. Paper 2 is 
the case studies. So it's Russia. Section A, it's the first lot of Russia, uh, 1914 to 1924. And part B is 1924 to 1941. All the Stalin stuff, so previously it's Bolsheviks, then it's Stalin. Um, it's also Germany, which I haven't managed to cover, and civil rights, like race relations, which I haven't managed to cover. But, yeah, you'll be okay. Good luck.